just released a report this morning about the real impact of Romney Ryan policies on Iowa. You know, she has there. She'll take. We uh, we did this this morning, and they'll take. I promise you, Tom will take it. Take you through it in great detail. Um, <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. So we can make a short version. Right? Yes. Um, but uh, um, I'll settle but, back then. One of the <laughs> one. Of, we had flip charts this morning. <laughs> <laughs> this was. Um, but one of the notes that uh, will be particularly interesting to uh, to view mm -hmm. is that uh, with Romney Ryan policies, state budget. Yeah, the yeah. state budget yeah. would be uh, would lose 2.3 billion dollars per year per per year in federal funding. So that's you know billion? a third billion. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And uh, so that I mean the the small surplus that we have right now, you know. We're For, forget about that. Dollar, right, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, clearly the 2.3 billion is total investment in the state. Some of the, right. the, the biggest chunk is to, the, is to the state budget. It includes some that goes straight to localities and... Uh, yeah. Some of the other properties. Right. 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 City governments. So. Yeah. yeah. But it's a huge chunk. Yeah. So, it just, yeah, just would make our already difficult, or your already difficult choices even, even tougher, so... Um, yeah, you know what? Oh, yeah, I want to make... So, so yeah, Joel, that'll pass over here. All right. Uh, so thank you all for uh, for having us today. My name is Tom Periello. Uh, I'm from outside of Charlottesville, Virginia, where the University of Virginia is, um, and uh, represented briefly um, a big part of Central and Southern Virginia, and included mostly a lot of agriculture uh, as well as uh, previously manufacturing. That much of that had been uh, outsourced, and I now help run this think tank. Uh, that focuses on middle class economics, which is basically the idea that to some extent uh, the elites in, in both parties for a long time had this notion that everyone agreed on the middle class but saw it as an outcome of economic growth, uh, whether that was through trickle down or Keynesianism. Um, and we believe the best economic thinking and data of today shows that the middle class is actually the driver of a strong economy, not the result of a strong economy. Um, having uh, purchasing power in the middle class, having a promise of social mobility for those who work hard and play by the rules, um, that most entrepreneurship and uh, small businesses that go on to, uh, to employ many people, um, if you actually see, correlates uh, most strongly to the, the existence of a strong middle class. So that is our bias uh, on the table. Um, but what we have tried to do uh, with this report um, and a series of reports is to help folks take all of this stuff that's being thrown at you from 30-second uh, spots and try to crunch through the data. And unlike most reports, I would argue, um, we are also equally clear not just about our conclusions but about our methodology. What are the assumptions we've made and not made? So uh, organizations spend quite a bit of time trying to say what would this mean to a family in, in Iowa um, and if Romney and Ryan's plans that they have supported uh, would be implemented. I'll go through just some of the top lines. I won't bore you too much, though my job here is to be boring. It is not to be uh, to be sexy. I come from a, a family of math teachers, and so Ooh. this is really just yeah. about simple math. Just about simple math. Um, and uh, so in the state for current seniors uh, in Iowa, uh, the Romney Ryan plan would mean $11,000 in additional out-of-pocket expenses over the course of retirement. Um, that includes if you happen to fall into the prescription drug donut hole that would be reopened as much as $585 a year in immediate increases. There were 231,000 seniors in the state of Iowa who would lose immediate benefits of some form or another uh, um, under the Romney Ryan plan. Now for those of us that are not current retirees like myself and Generation X, uh, we would actually uh, have to come up with, I would have to come up with $215,000 um, before I retire, just to close the gap between the Romney Ryan proposals and what I'm currently guaranteed, and in fact, earn, uh, I think of myself as an earner and not a taker, um, uh, in order to get what I'm currently guaranteed because of the payroll tax I pay every week. Pay every week. There are 520,000 women in Iowa um, who uh, could lose access to some form of free preventative care, mammograms, pap smears, pre and postnatal care, 520,000 women. Um, there are 20,000 young adults uh, who uh, could lose coverage under their family plans. Uh, as Matt mentioned earlier, $2.3 billion uh, per year of lost federal uh, uh, investments to states and localities here uh, in the country. 
are here in, in Iowa. Um, and as we go through in, the, in this report and an additional report, um, under this tax plan, while well, you've probably heard that middle class families would pay $2,000 more in taxes, uh, we've also shown that uh, Governor Romney's top political donor to him um, would get a $2.3 billion tax cut. Um, this is a combination of the high-end tax cuts and the fact that he makes 90% of his money overseas uh, in a protectorate of China, and the outsourcing loopholes that are there amount to $2.3 billion, which means that every family in Iowa would essentially be paying $1,600 more in taxes just to cover the tax break uh, of, of Mitt Romney's largest donor. Uh, now, I've been warned not to be too boring, but I just want to go very quickly through uh, the assumptions that we're making and the methodology we've, we've taken that really can't be questioned, which is why, um, you know, even Chris Wallace on Fox this weekend was basically pushing on to say, your numbers will add up. Um, and the independent studies that they've cited don't, in fact, reach the conclusion they claim uh, that they're citing. And if they do the $17,000 cap on deductions, uh, the problem with that, while that would protect some of the middle class families potentially, it doesn't produce the revenue. Um, and therefore you're back to a math problem, which is that their numbers don't add up um, uh, for the middle class. On, meta on the current seniors, I'll just say a word. Uh, why the $11,000 out of pocket for current seniors? Why, why does the Romney-Ryan plan, where they say we're going to protect current seniors, not in fact do so? Um, there are three major areas that are uh, related to the budget they put forward. One is the reopening of the prescription drug donut hole, uh, which could mean about $585 more per senior who's stuck in that hole. Um, second is uh, a significant reduction that's been made in co-pays and making preventative care visits free, um, which um, has immediate out-of-pocket expenses as well as, according to the American Medical Association, savings over time because seniors are coming in earlier, which means you're catching diseases earlier, which means more people are alive, and it's cheaper to care for. But the other is this big debate about the $718 billion uh, out of the budget. So just quickly on that, if I'll stay wonky for a second, um, the first thing to remember about this is that the exact same $718 billion is not only in Paul Ryan's budget and Romney's original budget, but has been in pretty much every bipartisan budget of the last 10 years. Because everybody agrees that there is waste, fraud, and abuse in the system, um, $718 billion worth. Uh, and um, so that seemed to be bipartisan consensus until um, it seemed to be good for political ads. So if this thing is so terrible, why is it that Paul Ryan put it in both his budget? Second um, is the issue that that is currently put towards expanding the solvency of Medicare. But leaving that debate alone for a second, which we can revisit, the other thing to remember is this. Premiums, Medicare premiums are set based on uh, a ratio to the overall budget of Medicare. Which means if you take that $718 billion and put it back uh, towards those who are uh, uh, doing waste, fraud, and abuse, it's not only a slap in the face to those who follow the rules, it actually increases the budget, which means there's an immediate increase in premiums. And that's not us sort of injecting that in mystically, that's just how Medicare premiums work. Which means that under this Romney plan that he talks about doing on day one, you're giving people higher prescription drug costs. Um, uh, more co-pays on preventative care visits and higher premiums. Uh, over a course of retirement, uh, that adds up to $11,000 uh, we've calculated for current seniors. Uh, the other numbers that I talked about for Gen X or baby boomers is about $60,000 over the course of retirement is the combination of that reduction in, in the value of the guaranteed benefit plus the voucher system, uh, which again, we can, we can go into our conclusions on that. Um, so there are lots of state-specific uh, statistics in the report. Uh, I mentioned some of the ones about women's health as well, some of the ones about young people. It's an average $820 cut in Pell Grants per year, um, and there are over 200,000 students in Iowa alone who would be affected by this. That's about $2,500 uh, over the course of a four-year um, uh, degree. Um, and in addition to that, you potentially see a significant reduction in the opportunity tax credit um, for students that actually could be as much as $2,000 a year for them or for their parents uh, on the deductibility of the college tuition. So why do I wonk out like this and bore the heck out of everyone with numbers at a time where it seems incredibly naive to believe that facts, numbers, and policy might matter? Um, well, we think that it's not cynical, that it's actually uh, a civic obligation where we can. 
um, to uh, do the best job that we can on saying what this would mean at the kitchen table, put those numbers forward, and let the other side, uh, or let others argue with that. We have so far uh, not been able to hear, or so far neither the Romney campaign nor his top donor have been able to cite a single fact in this report that they consider wrong, uh, not a single assumption that they disagree with. Um, and we believe that that says something. Uh, when we put our numbers on the table, when we put our methodology on the table, and all they can say is, well, what do you expect from those guys? We hate those guys. Uh, that's, you know, that's not impressive to me. Uh, and so we think this goes to this question about it, basic economic fairness. We believe uh, that these tax plans are, in fact, bad for, uh, for growth and for economic fairness in the country, but that's a subjective judgment. The objective judgment is to try to get as close as we can to the numbers. Um, so we believe that ultimately the bottom line uh, the, and the inescapable math of the romney Ryan plan is higher cost for seniors, higher cost for students, higher cost for middle class families, uh, so that a small number of very large donors uh, will see an enormous uh, tax break. And we don't think that that has translated into good economic growth in a strong middle class in the past, and we don't believe that uh, it will in the future.